Hello students. In today's video, we are going to discuss preclinical evaluation phase. Now, this video is fourth in the series of videos on new drug discovery and development. Look at this figure. It gives a compiled schematic representation of various steps in the new drug discovery and development process. The entire process of new drug discovery and development has two main stages. The first stage is the new drug discovery. During this process, around 5,000 to 10,000 active compounds are screened and leads are generated. Now, these leads are further optimized. Optimized leads are the most potential drug candidates. Now, second stage is a, is a new drug development where optimized lead compounds around 250 compounds are further screened in animal and human beings so as to finally identify a safe and effective drug molecule with optimal pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic, pharmaceutical and toxicological properties. So, preclinical evaluation phase or the preclinical studies is the step a new drug development where around 250 optimized lead compounds are tested in animal before trials could be carried out in human beings. And by the end of these preclinical evaluation studies, almost all the potential drug candidates are rejected and around 5 candidates are selected which are further screened and evaluated in the clinical trials. Now let's uh, talk about the preclinical evaluation phase in detail. Now preclinical evaluation phase is the phase where preclinical studies are conducted. Now preclinical studies involve testing of potential drug candidates in animals. Now preclinical studies provide information on the safety and efficacy of potential drug candidates before they could be tested in the human beings. Now, preclinical studies must comply with the guidelines of good laboratory practice to ensure correct and reliable results. Now, these studies are highly valuable in determining safe dose and the dose range of potential drug candidates so as to safely proceed with the clinical trials. Around 250 optimized lead compounds are generated during the new drug discovery and these are tested in preclinical evaluation phase. Uh, now let's uh, discuss experimental methodology of preclinical studies. A series of experiments are performed using in silico, in vitro and in vivo experimental models. Now let's uh, discuss these uh, experimental models which are used during preclinical evaluation phase. Now, first type of model is the in silico experimental model. Now, a computer plays a very important role here, here. Now, these experimental models are based on computer simulation. Now, computer simulation model runs a computer program and predicts the behavior of potential drug candidate. Now, as this, as this model predicts the behavior of drug candidates, these studies are done prior to in vivo and in vitro studies and in most of the cases, in silico models also provide additional information. And thus, in silico experiments often proceed or complement in vitro and in vivo studies. Now, in silico models provide uh, information on investigational new drug behavior that is used in subsequent in vitro and in vivo experiments. Second type of models used in preclinical studies are the in vitro models. In vitro means outside the body that is in a petri dish or in a test tube. So, in vitro models are used for studying the investigational drug in a petri dish. Now, the model used cells, tissues, organ cultures, cell components derived from animals. And these models are very useful in providing information on the mode of action of investigational drug molecules. 
Now, in vivo models are the most important. Here, experimental studies are done on intact or complete animal. Now, investigational molecules are administered in animal body and effects are seen. Pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic and toxicological studies are performed using in vivo models. Now, studies are performed in two species, rodents and non-rodents. Rodents include mouse, rat, guinea pig, then uh, rabbits. Non-rodents include a uh, dog, then non-human primates like uh, monkey and apes. Now, mostly mouse and dog are used as experimental models. Now, studies on monkeys and apes are performed occasionally only in the case of large molecules. And these optimized uh, drug candidates, they are tested by both oral as well as the parenteral routes. Uh, very important. Now, let's discuss about the different types of uh, preclinical studies uh, that are performed during preclinical evaluation phase. Now, two types of studies are performed namely animal pharmacological studies and animal toxicological studies. Now, animal pharmacological studies include pharmacokinetic studies and pharmacodynamic studies. Now, pharmacokinetic studies evaluate ADME, that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of potential drug candidates in animals. Further, VD, that is a volume of distribution and half-life, uh, that is the T half of drug candidates is also determined. Now, pharmacodynamic studies involve study of dose response relationship. Now, here dose response curves are plotted. Look at this figure. Log dose is plotted on the x axis, while percentage of uh, animals showing the response are plotted on the y axis. Now, this is the therapeutic effect DRC, and this is the lethal effect DRC. Now, look at this uh, DRC of uh, therapeutic effect, ED50, ED50 is the median effective dose which produces uh, the desired therapeutic effect in 50% of animals. Now, LD50, LD50 is the median lethal dose that kills 50% of the animals. So, ED50 and LD50 are determined by plotting the dose response curves. Now, pharmacological therapeutic index is the ratio of LD50 to ED50. So, therapeutic index is determined in animals. Now, this therapeutic index determines safety of drug. Wider is the therapeutic index, safer is the drug. Now, apart from determination of uh, pharmacological therapeutic index in animals, maximum efficacy, safety of uh, investigational drug molecules are evaluated and mechanism of action is also elucidated. Now, after pharmacological studies, let's discuss toxicological studies performed in animals. Now, very important to note that the primary aim of toxicological studies is to determine safe dose and dose range of drug candidate. Now, toxicological studies are mainly of three types, acute, subacute and chronic toxicity studies. Now, acute toxicity studies are single dose studies, whereas subacute and chronic toxicity studies are repeated dose studies. Now, let's first talk about the acute toxicity studies. Now, as these are single dose studies, investigational drug is administered in a single dose, usually in mouse and dog, where mouse is a rodent and dog is a non-rodent. Animal is observed for one to three days. Now, if this dose is found to be safe, dose is escalated, that is dose is increased. So, in the next animal, dose is increased. Now, again, the animal is observed for the signs of toxicity and death. Now, if the dose is found to be safe, then the doses which are administered uh, to the subsequent animals are increased.
and the maximum tolerated dose is determined where the maximum tolerated dose is the highest dose that will produce the desired therapeutic effect with acceptable side effects now apart from this ed50 that is the effective dose 50 and ld50 that is the lethal dose 50 which kills 50 percent of the animals is also determined now organ toxicity is examined by histopathology of animals that is the examination of tissues and organs of the animals so primary goal of acute toxicity studies is to determine effective dose 50 uh, that is the dose that produces the desired therapeutic effect in 50 percent of the animal population second to determine ld50 that is the dose that kills 50 percent of the animal population and to determine the maximum tolerated dose that is the highest dose which produces the desired therapeutic effect with acceptable side effects. Now, the subacute toxicity studies are the repeated dose toxicity studies. Now, doses are selected on the basis of ED50 and LD50 determined during acute toxicity studies. Now, investigational drug molecular studies is studied again in two species rodent and non rodents uh, usually mouse and the dog now investigational drug is given by the clinical route that is the route of administration desired to be used in human subjects now repeated doses of uh, investigational drug are given for 2 to 12 weeks and animals are examined for overt effects that is overall effects uh, food intake body weight hematology etc and organ toxicity now chronic toxicity studies are performed similar to subacute toxicity studies but in chronic toxicity studies the investigational drug is given for 6 to 12 months and the main goal of all these toxicity studies is to determine safe dose and dosage uh, range of the investigational drug molecule so that clinical trials could be carried out and very important unsuitable candidates are rejected at each uh, at, at each step other studies performed during preclinical evaluation phase are reproduction and teratogenicity studies here effects of investigational drug are studied on spermatogenesis, ovulation, fertility and the developing fetus. Then uh, mutagenicity studies. Here ability of drug to induce genetic damage is studied in bacteria, mammalian cell cultures and rodents. Another type of study is the carcinogenicity study. Now, carcinogenicity studies are performed to find out if the investigational drug can produce tumors. So, drug is given for long periods that is years to the whole life of animal and the animal is studied for the development of tumors. Now, unsuitable drug candidates are rejected at each step. By the end of preclinical studies, almost all the molecules are rejected except around best 5 molecules which are further evaluated during clinical trials. So, this is in brief about the preclinical evaluation phase. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.